Did you know that one of the most infamous chapters in American history revolves around the Salem Witch Trials? This event remains one of the most notorious episodes of mass hysteria and injustice in history, where more than 200 people were accused of witchcraft. Here is the complete story of what had happened. In 1692, the small Puritan community of Salem Village, Massachusetts, was thrown into turmoil. It all began in the winter when two young girls, Betty Paris and Abigail Williams, the daughter and niece of the village's minister, Samuel Paris, began experiencing strange fits and convulsions. They contorted their bodies into unnatural positions, screamed uncontrollably, and hurled objects across the room. Soon, other young girls in the village exhibited similar behaviors, and the community was gripped by panic. Seeking an explanation, the villagers quickly turned to the most feared and reviled source, witchcraft. Under intense pressure and questioning, the girls accused three women of being witches. Sarah Good, a homeless beggar. Sarah Osborne, an elderly and sickly woman. And Tatuba, an enslaved woman from the Paris household who had told the girls tales of voodoo and magic. Taituba confessed to practicing witchcraft, likely under duress, and claimed that there were other witches in Salem conspiring against the Puritans. The hysteria spread like wildfire. Fear and suspicion permeated the community, and soon neighbors were accusing neighbors of consorting with the devil. The accusations targeted anyone who deviated from the strict norms of Puritan society, outspoken women, those with eccentric behaviors, and even those simply caught in a web of personal vendettas. The trials began in earnest, and the court, led by the formidable Judge Samuel Sewell and Chief Magistrate William Stoughton, relied heavily on spectral evidence, testimony that the spirits or specters of the accused had been seen committing witchcraft. This type of evidence was notoriously unreliable and impossible to refute. The accused were subjected to harsh interrogations, and those who maintained their innocence faced dire consequences. One of the most notorious aspects of the trials was the method of pressing used on Giles Corey, an 81-year-old farmer who refused to enter a plea. He was subjected to a form of torture where heavy stones were placed on his chest in an attempt to force him to plead. Corey endured this brutal treatment for three days before succumbing to his injuries, his last words famously being, More weight. The hysteria reached its peak in the summer of 1692. Nineteen men and women were hanged on Gallows Hill, and one woman was crushed to death. Among those executed were Bridget Bishop, the first to be hanged, and Rebecca Nurse, a respected elderly woman whose execution shocked the community. However, as the number of accusations grew, doubts began to surface. Prominent figures, such as Increase Mather and his son Cotton Mather, who had initially supported the trials, started to question the validity of the evidence and the fairness of the proceedings. In October 1692, Governor William Phipps intervened, halting the trials and later declaring a day of fasting and soul-searching for the tragedy that had unfolded. By May 1693, the remaining accused were released from prison, and the Massachusetts Bay Colony formally ended the trials. In the aftermath, the colony acknowledged the miscarriage of justice. Many of those involved in the trials, including Judge Sewell, publicly confessed their errors and sought forgiveness. One of the most enduring myths about the Salem witch trials is that those accused of witchcraft were burned at the stake. In reality, none of the accused were burned. Instead, they were hanged, with the exception of Giles Corey, who was pressed to death with heavy stones for refusing to enter a plea. 
Burning at the stake was a common method of execution for witches in Europe, but not in the American colonies. While belief in witchcraft was widespread, the trials were fueled more by personal vendettas, social tensions, and political motivations than by genuine fear of witches.